All right. I think we're good to go. Well, thanks again, everyone, for joining us uh, during my morning, at least. Uh, I'm not sure where it is where you are or what time it is where you are, but thanks for joining us today uh, for our uh, fourth quarter supporters call. Uh, again, my name is Holly Ross. I'm the executive director here at the Drupal Association, and we are just really um, thrilled to be able to do these and share so much great news about what's happening at the association and what you've helped make happen. So again, welcome. And if you are listening from your computer today, um, you've got the mic and speaker audio option. Um, if you could wear a headset, I would really appreciate that. That helps keep the noise uh, at a minimum. And uh, we've got a Q&A window set up, so we definitely want you to ask questions while we share today. So feel free to um, jump in with whatever it is that you want to know about. I'm going to be trying to check that out and uh, looking for folks that uh, uh, have questions so that I can make sure the presenters ask those. Um, so I think we're not using the, the chat, but there is a, a raise hand feature. There's also a Q&A window. You can pop things in there. And if you learn something new or fun that you want to share, uh, our Twitter handle is at Drupal Associates, and you can use that to share far and wide. So that's the housekeeping for today. Um, and I see, Ray, that you have a question, so I'm just going to unmute you. Or at least you have your hand raised. I, and I inadvertently pressed that button, Holly. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, carry on. How Ray. are you today? <laughs> There's my question. Brilliant. I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna go back to business here, and um, we are just a couple of uh, one more quick note. Uh, again, um, we we answered this a little bit before, but we will record the session today and make the slides available to you as well. So. Keep an eye out for those later on today. Okay, and uh, just a reminder about a few of the things that are coming up uh, at the Drupal Association. We're always working on something, um, and we have a few exciting um, DrupalCon events that are in the works. Uh, so in February, we'll, we'll uh, launch our first DrupalCon Latin America in Bogota, uh, which we're really excited about and should be a really interesting uh, a really interesting con to be at, um, both content-wise with um, such a great mix of speakers from around Latin America and the rest of the world, um, but also just an interesting one. It's the first time we'll get the chance to um, try and use translation services at a con so that we can make content available both in English and Spanish. Um, so we'll learn a lot from that experience um, while we have a, a great time learning about Drupal. Uh, and then after that, in May, is DrupalCon Los Angeles. Um, that, uh, that show uh, is going to, obviously, is coming up soon. And in January uh, is when we're going to be launching Call for Papers for DrupalCon Los Angeles. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for that and get your session submissions uh, in uh, to, for consideration. And after that, in the fall, we'll be headed to Barcelona for in September. Uh, and that'll be DrupalCon Europe uh, in Barcelona. And so uh, materials for that, a call for paper, all of that will open up uh, later on in the spring of 2015. So three big cons coming up. And then also our quarterly global training days. We just finished our last global training days of 2014. Uh, so the next one is uh, getting on the calendar for 2015. And we definitely invite all of you to help grow the Drupal community by participating in that and helping us bring new uh, Drupal uh, uh, developers into the community, get them all trained up and ready to go. So keep an eye out for more, more on that as well. So those are just a few events that are coming up. Um, today, we're going to be looking at 2015 and, and what's, on the, what's on the docket. So we'll talk a lot about uh, some Drupal.org uh, Drupal improvements that have been uh, made in 2014 and what's on the plans for 2015, how we're going to market Drupal uh, in 2015, especially as we anticipate a big Drupal 8 release. Um, we'll be talking about advertising on Drupal.org to help fund more of the work that we're doing um, and Drupal Jobs, which launched this year. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and of course, I just want to say thank you again to all of you who are on the call. Uh, you're here because you are a supporter of the Drupal Association and the work that we're doing. So everything that we're talking about here today is only really possible because of the support that you give to the association. So just thank you so much for all the ways that you contribute both uh, financially and with your time and with your good energy and 
all your good vibes. So I really appreciate it. So what I'm going to do now uh, is find Josh on this list. Here he is. And unmute him. And Josh, are you there? I am here. Excellent. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Excellent. Well, I'll go ahead and dive right into this then. Um, so before we jumped into 2015, I wanted to do a re recap of 2014. Um, it, very much a year of going from zero to 60 <laughs> very quickly. Um, my first day with the association was actually March 31st, and we immediately began uh, building up an engineering team. We are now fully staffed on our engineering team. We have um, 11 and a half FTE that are uh, dedicated to improving Drupal.org and the Drupal ecosystem, which is really exciting because it's let us do a whole bunch of incredibly um, effective things for the community. Uh, first, the infrastructure improvements have been big. Uh, we've had bigger, faster test bots on uh, Amazon Web Services that we've been rolling out for uh, major sprints and at the cons. Those have been a lot more successful than our previous test bot ar architecture because we were able to put a lot more power at the test bots for a short period of time, get through the sprints, and then dial them back down again, and that's been awesome. Um, we've removed a ton of technical debt, a uh, history of, of 13 years worth of, of buildup that we are now organizing in a more enterprise sort of way, uh, which is really exciting because it's going to give us a whole lot of flexibility going forward. Um, we've improved our monitoring and uptime. Uh, we've done performance improvements with the CDN. Uh, we have new database servers that are going on. Well, actually, they went online last night around 5 o'clock. Um, and you should be seeing some very noticeable performance improvements on uh, page load speeds uh, and particularly how quickly a page renders now because the query should be happening orders of magnitude faster. Uh, we're going to be doing some metrics on that over the week and, and figuring out just how much of a gain it gave us, but uh, uh, our early estimates were, were that it, it, it should give us two or three times the speed on, on some pages that are particularly heavy on the queries. Um, another thing that we did this year is we implemented change notifications. So if you're interested in hearing about what's coming next on Drupal.org a week in advance, um, you can sign up for the change notifications. There's information about the change notifications at uh, Drupal.org slash roadmap. Um, all of our kind of links off to our various initiatives are, are on that page. Holly, go ahead and pop the next slide up. Some other things from 2014 team that are more on the software side of things. We've been working really closely with the working groups on project prioritization. Uh, we did user research workshops with them in Austin and then finalized some uh, user personas that we, we rolled out around the Amsterdam time frame. And we've been doing some blog posts about different types of personas that uh, are using our site. Uh, been really focused on trying to move people up the ladder, going from newcomers to learners of Drupal to uh, what we would consider somebody skilled in Drupal. Uh, and then moving them on up to experts and then masters uh, of the craft. And uh, we're, we're really excited about the work that the user research uh, highlighted, and it, it dovetailed really well with the, the prioritization work with the working groups. Uh, we also launched an API this year, which was very exciting. Um, it's already allowed a couple of uh, services that are using Drupal.org to shift from, from scraping the site to actually calling the API and getting the data directly from that, and that also is a performance improvement. Uh, we've moved several Drupal 8 blockers, including uh, making semantic versioning possible. So we now can do Drupal 8.0.0 instead of just 8.0. Uh, we've also been trying to set the upgrade path by, uh, for localized.drupal.org by removing blockers from the, uh, from the community team that is working on that right now. And uh, I'm really excited to, to see that move along because localized is such an important part of making Drupal available in multiple languages. Uh, we've published a roadmap, which is no small feat because it takes a lot of time and effort from all the members of the working group and our advisors who all got in and helped us uh, do a, a ton of prioritization and strategizing around what should be the next thing, what is the most important thing. Uh, one of the things that came out of that is the Drupal.org responsive redesign, um, or if you prefer to just call it redesign in general because we're, we're, we're kind of taking a whole look at re-envisioning the entire Drupal.org site over the next year or so. Uh, we kicked that off uh, with the content strategy work that we started with uh, one of our uh, supporting partners, Forum One. They won the RFP to, to work with us on this content strategy. And uh, so far, it's been a, a really positive experience. We're identifying some gaps that we have in the, uh, the content types on Drupal.org, uh, trying to fill those in. And I think there's going to be some really exciting things that come out of that, particularly for supporters and for longtime users of, of Drupal that need ways of uh, communicating a little bit more effectively with the community. 
when we were doing the prioritization, everything broke down into basically four areas. And uh, these are roughly uh, scaled to the size of effort that uh, they represent for us. Uh, we, we are taking efforts to um, fund Drupal.org, so making sure that we have uh, multiple ways of uh, bringing in revenue for, for the association that helps us put that revenue back into Drupal.org. Um, we've been looking at sustaining support and maintenance on the site, so that's a lot of those performance improvements and getting rid of the technical debt I was talking about. We have our community initiatives, and these are initiatives where I can't put a staff member full-time on it, but I can remove blockers that may be stopping community volunteers from being able to do what they need to, to do to get something out the door. So we're really excited to work with community members if they have a, an idea that they're passionate about and they're driving an initiative forward. Uh, we can dedicate some resources to giving them infrastructure support or deployment support or uh, perhaps testing support. Those are the types of things that we can jump in and help with. And then we have our board and working group priorities, and I want to go into those in a little bit more detail. And congratulations to Holly to catching the fact that that large pause was, <laughs> I want to go to the next page, because I didn't think to say, next slide. Uh, so first of all, the, the roadmap, when we took the board and working group priorities, we said we can't do everything, so what are the things that we can focus on first? And we're going to be focusing on better account creation and login. We've got some exciting work coming there. Uh, we're going to be changing the way a newcomer is seen on Drupal.org so that if an account uh, is in its first 90 days, people can actually see that. And uh, what we're hoping is it'll trickle, trigger a more friendly reaction to the posts that they may put on the site uh, and kind of work them up the ladder towards being learners and then uh, skilled users in our community. Uh, we're also doing some things to fight spammers, uh, which is, is kind of something that you don't think about doing until you're being attacked, and we're trying to be a little bit more proactive about this by being able to identify those humans that we want to engage and work up the path, which will make it easier to identify spammers and um, get their accounts blocked more quickly and, and keep, that, uh, keep our community clean and neat. Uh, we're also doing some great work on organization and user profiles. Um, a lot of this stems from the... Uh, the the presentation that Dreves gave in Amsterdam that talks all about in, engaging the community and tending the, the common good that we, uh, that we represent with Drupal.org. And so what we're really looking at is ways to highlight organizations that have contributed, uh, being able to pull that information into their profiles, and then after we have all that information in the profiles, figuring out ways to um, give benefit to those who contribute the most by showing their content and in a slightly different way um, so that it gives them that recognition for being heavy contributors. And this is a, a huge uh, shift for Drupal.org, but it's one that we're all really excited about because I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to encourage more contribution and it's also going to help keep around the, uh, the great contributors that we have, both on the organizations that give a lot in terms of the time of their employees and directly in, in terms of uh, financial support of the Drupal Association. Um, but also those individual contributors who do it just for the passion and being able to uh, highlight them and, and show just how much they've given to the community. And that's, that's something that uh, we're excited about. I mentioned the redesign of Drupal.org. We're definitely going responsive with this. Uh, we're planning to support all the way down to mobile devices, all the way up to uh, very large screens that our developers are often using Drupal.org with. Uh, but it's more than just the visual appearance of Drupal.org. It's really about reimagining the content of Drupal.org and designing around that. Uh, we're going to be doing some exciting things with issue workspaces. And if you uh, missed any of the earlier presentations we've done on this Git and issue, work issue workflow improvement, I highly recommend that you uh, track one of those down and, and kind of go through it. Um, we are just now kicking off that work. Uh, we're very excited about it, and we think over the next six months you're going to see some really transformative ways in terms of how we manage our work on Drupal.org so that we can be a more efficient open source project, and that's, that's going to be really exciting. Um, the yeah, next two, both make Drupal search, uh, Drupal.org search usable and also improve tools to find and select projects. This was something that came out over and over again in the user research. Really what we've heard from folks is they need to be able to find the solutions that help them build great Drupal sites. And so we're excited to be working on those two things in the next uh, next few months. And then uh, one of the, our biggest sites that is still sitting on Drupal 6 that we need to get upgraded so that it's uh, in the proper upgrade path is Drupal Groups. And we're doing some pre-work on that uh, starting in the February time frame um, in terms of planning and figuring out what kind of the next steps for Drupal Groups is going to be. 
Colin, if you want to go ahead and pop to the next slide there. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of recent improvements that were directly related to those initiatives. Uh, go ahead and hit the next slide. Um, if you have a, oh, those, that's in a different order than I expected, but that's okay. I can talk about this one first. Um, no, it's, it's okay. Uh, so the, the, the first thing I'll talk about that uh, we just uh, released in November is this new commit credit message. Uh, it auto-generates the commit credit message. Uh, this was something that was previously done through an extension on your browser called Dreaditor, and it would kind of read Drupal.org and it would create this message. Uh, but it wasn't a complete message because it didn't follow kind of the, the collection of all the people who had contributed in a particular issue, allowing you to see the people who had uploaded a patch in, in the form of a file or an image in the form of a file or had commented on an image or on an issue. And, and being able to pull all that together in a commit message. And this is an important first step in that, that contribution credit concept that we're talking about. Right now, this is just focusing on the users. Um, the next version of this is actually going to also include uh, the organizations that supported that user in doing that, uh, that contribution. And so this, this particular UI is going to change a little bit, but what it really comes down to is it, it gives us a really great way to see just how much conversation has gone on in any given issue what that turned into in terms of a commit to the Drupal uh, code base. And so it's a, kind of an exciting first step along that path. Um, and it actually is, is pretty easy to, to uh, interpret and read through as well. So we're, we're excited about its use by um, the maintainers of both core and also uh, of, of contributed modules. The other thing that I wanted to highlight, um, if you have a profile, this is what it looked like a year ago. It was very basic. Uh, we did call out if you were a supporting partner, uh, which is awesome. Um, using here one of my developers' uh, 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 profiles, just because he ha happened to have the screenshot of it, and you know he contributed a lot. And you could kind of see that, and he has some mentors, but it's, it's very basic and plain. Uh, about six months ago, uh, we implemented user profile picks. Uh, we started uh, improving uh, what the profile looked like in terms of little bits that we moved around here and there. If you were to look at it as recently as last week, uh, you'll say, see that we continue to move it towards this uh, a little bit better organized uh, profile. So we've been taking these incremental steps of getting um, old technical debt in the form of old profile fields, migrate them into a more standard way of listing them, and then showing those on the, on the profile. What we're hoping to get to in the next, uh, really in the next month to month and a half is going to be what the next slide represents. And for those of you who have been following along, uh, Danny Norton did some great work in this area, but, but basically highlighting out uh, projects maintained, uh, highlighting out the, the community involvement at a very high level, organizing things, uh, giving some areas of expertise that we can highlight on people's um, profiles. We're really excited about the changes that are that are coming with the, uh, the profiles. So, um, Stay tuned, uh, more to come there. They're going to continue getting better, and um, thank you again for the support that makes that possible. So a couple more things to, to think about in terms of improving the experience, because that's what we're working on right now. Uh, we're, the things that we're doing for new users is that user role progression that I was talking about, where we're really trying to engage users. Um, engaging those use, new users in their first 90 days of creating an account on Drupal.org. And then using community members to help us identify new contributors. Uh, this is something that we kind of do with the very highest level administrators of the site. People who have been around the community for upwards of eight to ten years who have uh, gotten so involved that they have some level of administrator access on Drupal.org. But we're looking to extend this out and grow this a little bit so that more community members can help us identify those contributors and, and kind of grow that base that makes us a strong community. And then for our longtime contributors, the, the user experience improvements that we've been doing there have been really about performance. Um, we, as we were doing some of these migrations, we actually found a performance improvement on the project pages and user dashboards that uh, equated to a 200% a improvement of load time on those pages. Um, and so having dedicated people who are continuously looking at these things, that are looking at the monitoring, that are um, actually looking at the measurements of how things are loading and how quickly, this has been huge because it's enabled us to identify the quick wins that make Drupal.org better. So again, I, you know, I say this every time I get a chance whenever we're talking to supporters. 
thank you for your support because you're directly making Drupal.org better by giving us uh, the time to, to dedicate that, uh, that resource to it. That's what this slide was about. Sorry, I got ahead of myself, Holly. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I don't see any questions in the question queue, so I'm going to assume that made sense to everyone. But just a, a reminder that there's a Q&A feature, so if you do have a question, go ahead and, and pop it in there. And I'm happy to work backwards if you think of it later. Uh, you know, think of something later that you want to ask Josh. Um, and you know, Holly, I, I, I should put another plug in, uh, drupal.org slash roadmap. Um, it highlights all the things that are in the initiatives, the stuff that we're focused on right now. You can click through and directly see the work that we're focused on in that, in that area as well. Brilliant. Yep, drupal.org slash roadmap. Excellent. Well, thanks, Josh. I know you guys have been busy. It's nice to see, um, it's nice to see that all here in a nice summary. <laughs> um, so one other thing that we want to talk about that's upcoming for uh, 2015 is a, is a new program that the the, uh, the board and, and staff um, have been working on uh, along with the uh, branch maintainers for, for Drupal 8, and that's the Drupal 8 Accelerate program, which we just launched last week. Um, and this is something that um, I think we're all concerned about, which is, you know, when will we see Drupal 8 out in the world uh, as, a, as, a, as a real product? And, um, and uh, we want to help make that happen as, as quickly as we as we can for the community. So there have been a lot of discussions throughout the years, as I understand it, about how the association can help fund Drupal uh, project development. Um, we definitely have a strict mandate not to be engaged in the actual um, development itself, not to influence the core code. Um, and we take that very seriously, but we do want to help the community um, get to uh, releases as quickly as they can. And there's lots of ways that we can do that um, through the tools that we develop on Drupal.org, and Josh's team has done a lot of great work there. Um, there's lots of ways we can influence that through the Drupal cons and training people and getting them engaged, um, working with sprint mentors and getting new folks um, to come to the development process and start contributing to core uh, at the Drupal cons, right? So there's lots of things that we've been able to do in, in a soft way, but we haven't really been able to show you know, a direct correlation between you know, that work and um, increasing the speed uh, or velo you know, velocity, as Josh likes to say, of um, making, making a Drupal 8 uh, launch happen. Um, and, uh, and the community has uh, struggled to figure out how to fund this in a long-term way. You know, we've seen Dries talk about getting more companies to fund core developers. Uh, Alex Potts, you know, Chapter 3, and um, the Acquia funds several folks, and we've got, you know, lots of other um, uh, core committers who are uh, funded full or part-time by other companies. Uh, Chex is uh, funded by MongoDB, right? So it's an interesting ecosystem, uh, but it doesn't take care of everything. Um, we have definitely had conversations about the association paying people directly or, you know, hiring core developers, but that seems to maybe cross that line of, uh, of the Drupal Association um, not influencing core development. Uh, so we decided that rather than try to sit back and think of the perfect way to answer this question, uh, what we would do is we would develop an experiment and see how it goes. <laughs> and that's what the Drupal 8 Accelerate program is. Um, you know, our goal is to make sure that we positively impact the release date of Drupal 8. Um, that's going to be a little tough since we don't actually have a, you know, a real finish line. We can't say that, you know, right now it would definitely come out on November 27th um, in 2015 if no funding were made. But, uh, but we think we can track um, some, uh, you know, we think we, we were hoping that what we can see is that through this project, uh, you know, we can see folks... Um, uh, reducing criticals at a rate faster than they were being reduced prior to our assistance, for example. And what it is basically is just a $125,000 fund um, that will be modeled very much after the community cultivation grants that the association already gives out. Uh, so the community cultivation grants are requested by the community. So someone can write in and say, you know, I'm going to do a camp for the first time in Uzbekistan or in Mali, and uh, I need some assistance to get that camp going. 
uh, or someone can write in and say, I'm going to start a training program in the Philippines. I need some assistance to get that program going. Um, and what we have is a group of community volunteers who work together to review and vet those requests. They make they, you know, they agree to make certain grants. Um, and then the association acts as the bank and a bit of um, logistic support. Um, and that's something that we do all over the community. So we will wire the money to the folks who receive the grant, and then we'll provide them with a little bit of support to help them get going. And, and that's very much what we imagine here in the Drupal 8 Accelerate program. Uh, the difference here is we're going to have two kinds of requests that can be made. Uh, the community can still certainly request all kinds of things, but we're also going to have requests that come directly from the branch maintainers. So the folks who are most responsible for the core product, uh, they'll be able to say, oh, I see a really huge need here. Here's a way that we can move it forward uh, and they can make a request themselves. Uh, now, in this instance, uh, for the Drupal 8 Accelerate Fund, it is the branch maintainers who will be making the decisions, so they will fund themselves, <laughs> which, is a, which is a bit of a thing, uh, but given everyone's time constraints and, and, and whatnot, we thought um, you know, this, this makes the most sense. Um, the branch maintainers have to all agree to make the funding, so if there are a set of folks who don't believe that's the best next step, you know, it doesn't get funded, so there's a bit of a check there for that. So branch maintainers can make a request. The community can make a request. I, we chose this approach for uh, a very specific reason. We wanted to make sure that um, while the branch maintainers certainly have the most inside knowledge about what is critical to the project and what needs to get addressed, um, and while our overall goal is just to knock out all of those things as quickly as possible to get uh, the release out, one of the other things that we really want to be able to do is to encourage more people to get involved in core contribution in a bigger way. And that's what the community requests are really about. So I think you all know we've had significant success with Drupal 8 in terms of getting people engaged. There have been over 2,400 contributors so far, which is amazing, but it does follow that sort of typical long tail of a few people with a ton of commits and then a very long tail of people who each have one commit. Um, I fall into that very long tail. It's really difficult to um, get folks to move from their first commit to their second commit to their fifth commit to their 10th commit, right? So we want to find those folks who are in that sort of sweet spot of like, I have five to 10 commits and we want to get them to 100. <laughs> and we were hoping that the Drupal 8 Accelerate um, Community Fund is a way that that can happen. So things that we're specifically looking for from the, from the community are things like, um, I am hosting a camp. Um, we're going to do a sprint focused on Drupal 8 um, criticals. I need a branch maintainer there who can make commits, right? Because we all know it's demoralizing to do the work and then not be able to get it um, into core quickly uh, or at all. So um, we also know that there are a lot of tools that are maintained by the community that relate to how quickly we're able to work on Drupal 8. So if you're working on automated testing or uh, something on Localize or some of the other related tools to um, a good product release for Drupal 8, um, community members can request funds to um, make those tools improvements. Um, and then we're just really looking for whatever ideas out there that the community might have, whether it's, um, you know, I want to I want to figure out how to organize a 24 hour sprint around the world uh, or um, I have a user group and, and we want to do a weekly sprint on X topic um, and we need support for, you know, whatever it is. Um, the, the branch maintainers and the association are really excited to see what kinds of innovative and interesting ideas the community can come up with. So. We hope that um, you folks will help spread the word and think of things um, that you guys can do in your communities and request funds to help make that happen. And um, obviously, we all hope that this means that we get Drupal 8 sooner and faster and better than we would have before. So just a little news about the Drupal 8 Accelerate program. And once again, you can find all the details on our site. So at asos.drupal.org forward slash Drupal D8 Accelerate. So that's a little bit of news from my end of things. Um, and uh, just to say that uh, we did put uh, one sprint in working order before we got the program going. Uh, we just had uh, eight folks in Ghent, uh, that's in Belgium, uh, this last week. Um, 
And they were all really excited about the progress they got of about, you know, being together, right? So this wasn't sort of your normal contribution sprint. They went in with a very specific plan to tackle very particular things, uh, which is, you know, what we would want to see for these uh, Drupal 8 Accelerate grants. Um, and they were really thrilled because they were able to get the number of critical issues for a D8 release down to under 100. Um, and lots of folks who were there described it as getting three months of work done in five days because <laughs> it was very concentrated. Um, and everyone involved really felt like this w did have a positive impact on the release. So hopefully we'll be able to get more of that done and uh, get it out the door. So that's it on that program. And speaking of Drupal 8 anticipation, <laughs> um, Joe, uh, my colleague Joe from the association, I'm going to unmute you. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you're going to get the west rest of the community into a D8 frenzy? Yeah, so um, I thought this was a good slide to start with here, kind of segue uh, from the Drupal 8 stuff. This is a chart from a recently conducted community survey, and so this is kind of a sneak peek at uh, this particular chart. The question was, um, uh, which best describes your organization's adoption of Drupal 8? And um, as you can see, the, the vast majority, uh, around uh, 82%, either answered, eventually we will likely build Drupal 8 sites or migrate to Drupal 8 or we are eager to start working with it as soon as it is released. So uh, that's fantastic. And I was curious to see how uh, end user respondents answered that versus the design and dev shops. And you can see the breakdown there on the right, 74% of the, you know, the end user respondents or site owners, whatever you want to call them, said that uh, they answered in one of those two ways. And then 87% of design dev shops say they will move to uh, Drupal 8. So some pretty exciting uh, momentum there for, for Drupal 8 and obviously a lot of anticipation. Um, we'll be publishing the full results of the community survey early next year and there's all kinds of juicy data points and tidbits like this. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, Holly. And I uh, just wanted to uh, take a moment to recognize the migration of the Weather Channel to uh, Drupal. Um, that uh, is, is, as far as anyone can tell, is the largest Drupal site in the world with more than 100 million unique visitors per month, uh, more than 20 million pages of content. It's a top 20 U.S. site, according to Comscore. Uh, lots and lots of attention uh, for that when it happened earlier this month. Um, I think there were... Uh, over a hundred retweets from the Drupal Twitter handle, and I've never seen that many retweets um, from the Drupal Twitter, Twitter handle. So tons of social media activity, um, just lots and lots of attention. So that was a really uh, awesome launch, and uh, congrats to Media Current and Acquia for, uh, for getting that launch. There is a uh, case study on Drupal.org if you're interested in looking at that, um, and I can actually drop a link um, in, in the deck here to that case study, but it is in the case studies section on Drupal.org if you want to check that out. Um, I did want to also mention the recent SQL injection vulnerability that you probably have seen. Um, on October 15th, the security team uh, sent an advisory on the, um, uh, the SQL injection vulnerability for Drupal 7 that you probably heard about, and it received uh, some, some coverage uh, in the press. Uh, it got some attention, and then later in the month, on October 29th, uh, they sent out a public service announcement that um, would, you know, had some very urgent language in it that, you know, hey, if you haven't uh, gone out and, and um, patched or upgraded, you really need to do that right now, and they also gave a... Um, essentially a time to vulnerability window from the time the vulnerability was disclosed until uh, you should no longer consider your site safe. And that was only about seven hours. So that, uh, that public service announcement uh, got a lot of uh, coverage. Uh, it, was, it was pretty tough coverage. Um, um, a lot of it was negative. Some of it was, uh, was fair. Um, there were a couple of um, incorrect data points in some of the coverage. Uh, I worked with the security team to put together a follow-up uh, post that is linked there. And actually, if you go to Drupal.org on the home page down in the lower right in the news section, you'll see um, you'll see the follow-up, and you can link to that. 
in that uh, follow-up blog post from the security team, you can see there's some talking points uh, addressing some of the incorrect coverage um, and also just about uh, software in general and the fact that all software has uh, vulnerabilities. And also there are some hints at some potential new security processes and, and policies. Uh, and, and a lot of the negative coverage was around the process and, and policy. Um, so uh, when and, and if those, those processes and policies are updated will certainly help to amplify that uh, out into the market. Okay, Holly, if you want to advance there. I uh, also wanted to touch on a few highlights from uh, the 2015 plans. Um, we plan to exhibit uh, Drupal at uh, some European tech and marketing events and um, in 2015, we're focusing on Europe. The reason for that is if you look at the breakdown of uh, DrupalCon attendees, in Europe, it's a much more developer-heavy uh, conference. Um, there is not the uh, evaluator audience that there is in the United States or North America when we look at the breakdown uh, of that show. So in North America, there are more, um, there's more engineering management, IT management, uh, marketing folks. Uh, some more of the evaluator types. So we wanted to, in 2015, uh, take this to Europe, um, and the the events that we're going to exhibit at, um, that is uh, still in process. Um, we're still working on exactly which events we're going to hit, um, as well as how we're going to uh, fund the effort as well. But um, we will be uh, hitting at least a couple of events in Europe, uh, exhibiting Drupal. Um, also, we're going to be introducing some curated technical marketing content. Um, we're going to be introducing a, or reintroducing a Drupal email newsletter. Uh, believe it or not, there actually has been a Drupal email newsletter in the past. I believe the last email newsletter was sent in 2008 at some point. So we're going to um, start that back up. And you can expect to see that in uh, we're also planning to introduce a Drupal blog on Drupal.org that will be curated uh, content as well. Uh, and we're um, in the process of introducing some resource guides along a given set of topics. Um, and we're looking at things like uh, Google searches and, um, and, and, and other kinds of data to try to understand, all right, where do we really need resource guides? But essentially what these are are curated uh, groupings of uh, high quality content around, around again a given topic so uh, there's one on um, CRM that's in the works uh, there's one on media that's been published and there are a few others so we'll be continuing to publish those on Drupal.org in 2015. Also uh, case studies there are a number of great case studies on Drupal.org a lot of them are uh, very technical in nature which is a, a great thing um, uh, most of them are from, I would say, brands that the average person would not immediately recognize. So what we want to do is also create some case studies uh, from some of the larger brands that people would immediately recognize. And they may not be quite as technical in nature. They may focus more on uh, a business problem that was solved, a, a marketing problem that was solved, uh, those types of things. Um, so we're going to be introducing those in 2015. And then, of course, the uh, Drupal 8 launch. Um, whenever that happens, we have a plan in place to um, get lots of great coverage. Um, we're working on a webinar series, um, so there's, there's going to be a lot of activity uh, there. We just need to help get that out the door, um, as Holly mentioned. And that's it for me, so I'll turn it over to Carrie, unless there are any questions. Thanks, Joe. No, I think we're still still in the clear question-wise. And let me just make sure, Carrie, you should be able to speak now as well. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Lucina. I'm the Digital Advertising and Monetization Product Manager, which is kind of a mouthful. I had to shorten it for my business cards. Um, I came out in October to help expand the digital advertising opportunities on Drupal.org. Our goal is to generate more revenue support for the project with products that really speak to our supporters' needs and goals. So I've been conducting a lot of interviews with our supporters. I know I've probably chatted with many of you 
as well as members that represent the larger community, just to gain some insight and in what makes sense for Drupal.org. Um, some of the biggest guidelines and takeaways are that products should not only appeal to our supporters, but they should also be helpful to our users and support our mission to grow Drupal. We also want these products to be inclusive, so not only do we want to create more and more opportunities for you, but we also want to offer some lower cost options and tiered pricing when possible. And we're also trying to create some more high impact opportunities, but we want to do so in a way that it doesn't clutter the site or disrupt our visitors, especially contributors. Um, so some of the products you can expect to see from us in 2015 are the ongoing creation of curated content that Joe was just talking about with sponsored banner opportunities. So we're going to be developing these resource guides content by industry, for example, Drupal for government or Drupal for pharmaceutical, and then blog posts that will have banner opportunities within them. We're also looking to add banners on more high profile pages like the home page, the marketplace, case studies, and then search results. All placements that won't offend the majority but add a lot of volume to what we can offer you in terms of banner inventory. We're also exploring this new idea called audience extension, which would allow advertisers to programmatically reach the Drupal.org audience while they're on other websites through ad exchanges and networks. Um, this is pretty new and it's something that we're still exploring and hope to make it available after we've had some time to run it past a few more people within the community. Um, one product that, that kept on coming up when I was chatting with many of our supporters was this desire for dedicated or solo mailers. So we are working on creating an opt-in dedicated mailer product, which is where we would send out a dedicated email with a special offer on behalf of a supporter within a Drupal.org branded wrapper. This one's going to take a little bit more time to get going. We're going to be using probably the first half of the year to actually develop and generate that list that we can send to, and we hope to have it available and up and running by Q4. And then lastly, we're, we're going to be building some custom opportunities that, that make it easier for prospective users to try and test out Drupal. In terms of the timeline, we're trying to roll things out as quickly as possible. We're working on talking to the community about the best way to message these new initiatives to the community. And we're also trying to work with the engineering team's roadmap and just weaving these products into their roadmap without being too disruptive to all these other initiatives that you heard Josh talk about earlier. As soon as these products are ready to go as our supporting pro partners, you're going to be the first to know about them just so, so you get the first crack at them. Um, and Don or Johanna will be in touch with more info when those are up and running. And then moving on to Drupal Jobs. We have been making some tweaks to the site that are either already live or about to launch. We're improving the user experience and flow a bit, so creating clearer calls to action on the home page for seekers and employers with fewer steps to access the store and just hopefully making things easier as you move around the site. We also eliminated, we simplified the store by eliminating a couple of the products. So we eliminated the five pack of jobs and the standalone branded company profile page. Uh, we did rename the super bundle. We're calling it the Drupal job subscription. It's essentially the same. It's unlimited postings for a year as well as a company profile page with some added promotional benefits that I'll get to in a second. The last change in the store is that the featured listing will no longer be an add-on to a single posting, but a standalone product with the goal of it being a little bit more user-friendly when you purchase it. Um, Holly, if you don't mind clicking on a link, I've got a screenshot of the updated homepage for Drupal Jobs. So you can see there's very clear calls to action, whether you're an employer or a job seeker, um, making it easy to find your way around, whether you're new to the site or an existing user. Also over on the right side, we've implemented this featured job company block. So if you're if you have a job subscription um, and you are you do have that company profile page, you'll get very regular rotation in this very high profile block on the home page. And could you just go back to the last slide? Thanks. Um, 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 we're 
plus the daily email that will update the job seeker with new postings that match their search criteria. The goal is to improve the seeker's experience and keep them engaged to this with the site. So if you post, if you're an employer and you post a new job, you don't have to wait for them to find their way back to the site. They'll get a notification through this daily alert. But the plus side is there will also be some more branding opportunities, hopefully within it, that are similar to what you saw on the, the new homepage. In terms of our traffic strategy, we're continuing to include promotion on Drupal.org through banners and, and some new integrated placements down the road. We're going to be including messaging in our newsletters, developing some targeted email marketing campaigns, and then just doing some regular social media presence to, to keep it top of mind. Um, and so far, so good. We have over 600 job seeker profiles so far. I think that's up from about 100 or 150 from the last supporter call that I saw. And then just please let us know if there's anything else that you think we can do to improve the experience, either as an employer or even as a job seeker. I mean, feel free to ping us here in the Q&A window or just shoot us a message after our call. And we'd appreciate the feedback. And that's it. Thanks, Carrie. Excellent. Sure. So that was a, not a little amount of stuff <laughs> that we're working on. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, that's certainly not everything that's in the plans for, for 2015. Sounds like I have an echo. Sounds like I have an echo. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. Okay, so hopefully the echo is gone and Rachel can confirm that for me, uh, but I don't hear it anymore, so I think it is. Um, but so yeah, there is a lot of stuff going on for 2015, and this is certainly not all of it, and not even all of it that you know we'll see from um, Josh and Joe and Carrie this year. There's a lot going on. Um, but uh, we're really excited to get to this work uh, and to... I think really grow more fully into the mission that the association has. And we're just so thankful that you have been such a huge part of it. Uh, and again, just thank you for the financial support for all the ways that you support the Drupal projects through, you know, time and effort and energy. Uh, and also just thanks to you personally. I know we talked to a lot of you one-on-one -on -one, uh, throughout our work every day uh, and you guys provide a lot of just great, you know, moral support as well, which really is also very important. So we couldn't do this work without you. Um, and I just would like to say one more special thank you to, to Megan in particular, but also Joe and Josh and Carrie for your great work this year uh, in making all of the great accomplishments of 2014 happen. And we're really excited about what's going to happen in 2015. So Thanks everyone again and have a great holiday season and we will talk to you again in the in the new year show you some of the progress